Greetings, salutations, respect, and love, my precious little children. You have dialed on to the Prog Corner, the number one prog rock channel on YouTube, according to me. And today, I am doing the worst number one songs of all time. No, I'm doing the 80s edition. I did the 70s last week, and it was just horrible. Just awful. So much fun going through the miserableness of top uh, charting songs. Uh, yeah, the number one spot is usually uh, reserved for garbage, but, uh, you know, going through the 80s was quite an experience, man. I gotta say, uh, you know that Phil Collins had 20 top 10 hits in the 80s, uh, 14 as a solo artist, and 6 with Genesis? There are some really good chart toppers, unusually, uh, in the 80s. I could make a fantastic mixtape. I could have artists, yes, uh, Genesis, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, Pink Floyd, Boston, Queen, Def Leppard, uh, Bon Jovi, uh, Blondie, Ario, Cheap Trick, Van Gellis, White Snake, Human League, George Harrison, Steve Miller, Men at Work, Toto, all these bands top the chart. David Bowie, The Police, uh, Billy Joel, Van Halen, Stevie Wonder, Foreigner, Simple Minds, Tears for Fears, Duran Duran, Dire Straits, U2, Heart, Billy Idol. All those people had number one hits in the 80s, so the 80s weren't bad at all with respect to uh, the pop charts. Um... Few that escaped my wrath, uh, uh, Escape by Rupert Holmes, probably only because of that guitar solo in the middle, I kind of like, and it was a rechart. It first charted in 79. Sailing by Christopher Cross, just terrible. Uh, Sheena Easton, Morning Train. Uh, the One That You Love by Air Supply. Ugh, Jesse's Girl. Oh, okay, I kind of like that one. Olivia Newton-John, Physical, uh, Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's Up Where We Belong, Just Awful, Mickey by Tony Basil, Oh, Mickey, You're So Fine, uh, Say, Say, Say by Paul McCartney and uh, Michael Jackson, Footloose, Kenny Loggins, uh, Hello, and Say You, Say Me by Lionel Richie, Terrible, both of them, Brian Adams, Heaven, Terrible, Tiffany and her god-awful cover of I Think We're Alone Now. Uh, remember this number one hit, Will to Power, Baby I Love Your Way, and Freebird Medley? Well, I've got a medley that is making my list. Even worse than that, uh, 1989 was a particularly vile year for music. Uh, one of the worst years ever. You had Paula Abdul with not one, not two, but three number one hits that year. Straight up, Forever Your Girl and Cold Hearted. Millie Vanilli had three number one hits. Leave Millie Vanilli alone, by the way. I don't want to hear anybody talking about Millie Vanilli in the comments. Baby, Don't Forget My Number. Girl, I'm Gonna Miss You and Blame It on the Rain. Those were great songs. Give Dude Man his Grammy back. Absolutely. And Debbie Gibson at the end of uh, the 80s. Just a bunch of vileness, foolish beat, lost in your eyes. Both at number one. Oddly, her two biggest songs didn't hit number one. Uh, Only in my dreams and shake your love. Just terrible. There were 230 number one songs in the 80s. It started with the Please Don't Go by Casey and the Sunshine Band and the decade ended with the Who Else But Phil Collins with Another Day in Paradise. Uh, no Phil Collins is on this list, boys and girls, so get over it. Like I said, there were 230 number one songs in the 80s, and here are the 15 worst of them. At number 15, oh, Captain and Tennille, you will not escape my wrath. Muskrat Love didn't hit number one, so they were not included in the 70s listing. But here we are with Do That To Me One More Time. This was the band's uh, second number one. Muskrat Love did not hit number one, so I couldn't include that. It certainly would have. <laughs> yeah, this song was uh, four weeks at the top of the chart. It uh, was four weeks at number two. Uh, Rock With You by Michael Jackson kept it off the top for a while. This was the Captain and Tennille's last top 40 hit. Thankfully, uh, just awful, just terrible awfulness at number 14. A song I've always hated, it's Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie was on top of the world, man. He wrote this terrible song, and it spent nine weeks at number one in 1980 from August through October. 
The Billboard magazine called this the greatest duet of all time. Just awful. It comes from the Franco Zeffirelli film of the same name. And yeah, you know it. It's terrible. I hate it. At number 13. Yeah, Say 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 didn't make the list because honestly, I don't expect a whole lot from Michael Jackson. But uh, I expect more out of Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney and Ebony and Ivory was just god-awful. This abortion spent seven weeks on the top of the charts in May and June of 1982. This thing came off of uh, Paul McCartney's uh, Tug of War album, which was produced by... Uh, George Martin, not nearly as good as the Pipes of Peace was. It's just awful. Terrible, terrible at number 12. Here's a song that hit number one, stayed at, at the top of the chart for two weeks in 1983. Uh, and it's terrible. It's one of the most forgettable number one songs of all time. It was originally released in 1982 and peaked at number 73. And then uh, Luke and Laura on General Hospital had their whole love affair thing. Yeah, yeah, Laura fell in love with her raper. Yeah, that's just great television right there. Really good to, you know, messaging to send out to the young girls. And all of a sudden, Baby Come to Me by Patty Austin and James Ingram flies to the top of the chart and it hits number one in February of 1983. What a terrible song. It's written by uh, Rod Temperton and produced by Quincy Jones. So this is, uh, you know, contemporaneous with Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller. Just awful. What a forgettable song at number 11. One of my least favorite songs of all time. And one of the things you see in the 80s is a lot of these songs start coming off of uh, movies and TV shows and stuff like that. And at number 11 from Footloose, it's Denise Williams and Let's Hear It for the Boy. Oh, what a terrible song this thing is. It came off of Footloose. It spent two weeks at number one in 1984. This thing was produced by George Duke, man. You should know better, George. How could you be? Well, hey, George needed to make some money, man. Leave him alone. I don't begrudge him, you know, actually producing a hit. Uh, this was actually Denise's second number one hit. She had a number one back in 1978 with uh, Too Much, Too Little, Too Late. And here's the top 10 of awfulness from the, from the 80s, man. What a... What a terrible decade at number 10, an artist that never seemed to go away in the 80s. In fact, from 1982 to 1987, this artist had 12 top 10 hits. And the one I'm spotlighting today is The Power of Love by Huey Lewis. This thing spent two weeks at the top of the chart in August of 1985, infecting my eardrums with awfulness. This came uh, off of the Back uh, to the Future soundtrack, which really helped it. This was Huey Lewis's very first number one. He actually had a total of three. Uh, the dude and his band from San Francisco. He was old even back then, man. And it's 40 years later. And he's really old now at number nine. Another one of these number one hit songs that, you know, big, big hit back in the day. And I don't think I've heard it since. Yeah, it's a song called The Next Time I Fall by Peter Cetera and Amy Grant. Yeah, Amy Grant was that uh, gospel religious singer who decided she'd cross over into the pop charts. And Peter Cetera needs no introduction here. Apparently, this song was written by Bobby Caldwell and Paul Gordon, produced by Michael O'Martian. And the two songwriters absolutely had Peter Cetera in mind. They had written this song for Chicago, and then Peter Cetera left the band, but that... That wasn't going to stop him. They they wrote it specifically for his voice. And uh, Peter Cetera is just one of those guys that took the 80s and uh, just destroyed it, man. Made a whole bunch of money. But apparently, dude left Chicago because he said he didn't like that kind of music. Good riddance to you then, Peter Cetera. Good riddance to you. At number eight, it's Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car by Billy Ocean. Yeah, I didn't mind Caribbean Queen, but this song was just awful, man. It spent two weeks at number one in 1988. And apparently the title comes from lyrics of a terrible a song that made my awful list of the 70s. Uh, You're 16 by Ringo. Oh, yeah, this was a terrible, terrible, awful song written by Billy Ocean and Jeff Lang. How is he involved in this? That's just really weird. Uh, this was a... Uh, Billy Ocean's third number one, his final number one. The great Trinidadian singer disappeared into obscurity after this. Just awful. At number seven, oh, a song that takes the title for the uh, number one song with the longest title. It stars on 45, and the actual title lists all the songs in the medley, of which there were like 20, I guess. Uh, Venus, 
Sugar, Sugar, and then a bunch of Beatles songs like Drive My Car, We Can Work It Out, Nowhere Man. This thing was just ridiculous. Nobody wants to hear the Beatles with a disco beat behind it. Uh, these guys were apparently from the Netherlands. And uh, this song spent one week at the top of the charts in June of 1981. Uh, it's bad, man. If you haven't heard it, do yourself a favor and avoid it at all costs at number six. Here's an artist that I actually do like quite a bit, but this song's terrible. Just awful. It's Shake Down by Bob Seger. Another one of those songs from a movie. This was the Beverly Hills Cop 2. And Beverly Hills Cop 1 had a great song, right? That was uh, Glenn Fry and uh, uh, the heat is boop, boop, boop on. That was a cool song. Well, apparently Glenn Fry was busy. Uh, so he got his good buddy Bob Seger to do this song. It's Bob's only number one, if you can believe that. Bob Seger's only number one hit. And it's awful. It spent uh, one week at the top of the charts in August 1987. Really bad song. But these top five are just despicable, man. You are not going to believe how vile this top five truly is. Oh, at number five. I'm going with We Are The World by USA for Africa. I guess Harry Belafonte had her Do You Know It's Christmas and uh, immediately started uh, making phone calls and trying to find the right people for this project. Uh, the song was written by uh, uh, Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones, produced, of course, by Quincy. It's the eighth best-selling single of all time. Uh, but one of the people that really, really wanted to get involved apparently was John Denver. He'd been writing letters and making phone calls like, hey, man, I want to be a part of this. And uh, they said, absolutely not. We don't want nothing to do with you. And that uh, that's just nasty, man. That's vile. That's, that's just bad. Bad on you, Quincy Jones. Uh, but we do have Ian Underwood, Steve Porcaro, and uh, David Page uh, performing on this track. The only redeeming quality... Uh, yeah, spent four weeks at number one in 1985, and it's terrible. You know the song. At number four, Dion and Friends did this awful song cause, called That's What Friends Are For. Spent four weeks on the top of the chart in early 1986, and this thing's terrible. Dion's just a nut. She's crazy. She's completely insane. Song was written by Burt Bacharach and Carol Bear Sager. They know better. They writ they they've written such great material. Uh, this is not a great song for them at all. One of the worst things any of them had ever been involved in. And then you have the guest singers, which I guess kind of sort of save it. You got Stevie Wonder and Elton John and Gladys Knight shows up. But it's just awful. I hate this song. I always have. <coughs> at number three, I know a lot of you probably would have guessed this is at number one. But it's not. It's at number three. And it is Rick Astley and Never Gonna Give You Up, man. This uh, awful song spent two weeks on the top of the charts in March of 1988, and ever since has just been kind of like a cultural phenomenon, especially uh, the Rick Roll stuff that started uh, taking over the internet back in 2007. It's ridiculous. This song spent two weeks at uh, the top of the chart, but, uh, you know, it, it really is just kind of the brainchild of S.A.W. Saw production team, which was Mike Stock, uh, Matt Aitken, and Peter Waterman, who also worked with the Dead or Alive and Bananarama at that time, that kind of music. But, uh, you know, this song's everywhere and it's terrible. I've never liked it. Don't like his voice. Don't like the song. I don't like the jokes. You know, I don't like the 21st century jokes. It's really not all that funny. The Rick Roll stuff's not funny at all at number two. You know what is funny? is uh, how many people really, really like this song, man. At number two, I'm going with The Wind Beneath My Wings by Bette Midler. Man, everybody and their monkey's uncle had already done this song, but of course it took it uh, being part of a movie. This was, uh, uh, the movie was Beaches, and uh, the song hit number one for one week in 1989. But like I said, a bunch of people had already done this song. Kamel, Roger Whitaker, Sheena Easton, Lee Greenwood, Lou Rawls, Gladys Knight, Colleen Hewitt, uh, Gary Morris, and Perry Como. So, Bette Midler, you were you know, all the way down on that list, but somehow you made that song your own. That terrible song, you made it all the way to number one. And... Uh, I honestly could never, you know, I, I couldn't care less if I never hear it again the rest of my life. And that is absolutely the case with my 
Terrible number one, man. This thing is just a nauseating track. I apologize in advance to any of you uh, Bobby McFerrin fans out there, but don't worry, Be Happy is just not a good song, man. I'll give it props for being the, uh, the first a cappella song to top the charts. That's pretty cool. But once again, you've got a song from a movie. This was from that terrible Tom Cruise movie, Cocktail. Like all Tom Cruise's movies in the 80s are, you know, I'm the best at something. I'm, I'm the best uh, fighter pilot. I'm the best race car driver. I'm the best uh, cocktail server. It's just insane. It was ridiculous. It was terrible. Horrible movie. Terrible song. Uh, it won the Grammy that year for Song of the Year. And Bobby McFerrin won a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2023 from the Grammys. Primarily because of that song. Because I challenge you to name another Bobby McFerrin song. I don't think you can. Anyway, boys and girls, that was the top 15 terrible number one songs of the 80s. Yeah, we're going to do the 90s next. And if you know, if I'm feeling jiggy, I'll probably go back and do the 60s. We'll see. Anyway, tomorrow on the channel, boys and girls, I'll be doing uh, my vinyl collection. We're going to keep going with that. And the letter D is up next. And then I've got a couple album reviews that are coming up pretty soon. The new Airbag and the brand new Focus, Focus 12. Just amazing. Anyway, guys, I love you. Peace in the Middle East. Free Tibetan. God save the king. Save King Chucky. Chucky needs your saving right now. And you know what? Let's stop shooting people, okay? You know, I might not be the biggest fan of Donald Trump, but let's not shoot that man. Let's not shoot anybody, man. You know, it's ridiculous. Uh, people uh, just kind of calm down, listen to prog music, and everything's going to be all right. I love you guys. And remember, dance with snakes, and everything's going to be all right. If you're dancing with them snakes, oh, yeah, the world's going to be just fine. I love you guys. Peace.